Well, hello everybody. This is AC's 8-Bit Zone, and this is a midweek coffee break. So today we're going to talk about a couple topics. I have one mail item that has to do with the Commodore 64, and then a couple of Septandi topics. We have a mail item to open, and that's Commodore 64 related. So first let's go over to the desk and open this package. Do you like what I've done here? I like this juxtaposition of here's my Commodore 64C and my Tandy Coco 3. These machines, you know, I don't want to compare these. They're different machines, but they're very similar. They made so many people happy in the 80s and the 90s, and they're still entertaining us even today. I mean, look what we're doing here. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get to this mail opening. And this goes back to a project that I began in a couple of midweek episodes back. This is, here, let's get a little surface to work on here, zip sockets. At least that's what I hoped it would be, and it is. Okay, so just a whole range of them. Here are 40 pin zips, like for a uh, CPU chip. Uh, more 40 pins. Here are some narrow bodied ones. Uh, some wide body 24 pin. Uh, I think that that's the size of some of the ROMs in the Commodore 64. Let's just get one of these out. Actually, let's get one of the 28 pin. Here's a 24, 40. 28 pin wide. That is not a 28 pin wide. So it looks like unfortunately <clears throat> they advertise this as 28 pin wide. However, it's not. It's narrow. So we'll have to we'll have to look at one of these 40 pin, which can work in a pinch. So just what you'd expect. For a ZIF socket. Now the reason I have these is first we talked about in that in that other midweek topic which I'll link up above. Um, this is a breadboard project to make a tester for 64C IC chips. I want to be able to test the PLA chip which is a programmable logic array, and they can fail prematurely in this in the Commodore 64. So anyway, it looks like I'll have to use one of the wide body packages. This is a 28 pin package, this PLA chip. This is one of the original components. This is a replacement chip called the Plankton, one of many replacements for the PLA that are out there. So the idea is this Arduino board will stimulate the inputs of the PLA. So we'll, we'll connect that into the ZIF socket. I'll breadboard up and, and wire some, some outputs and some inputs back to the Arduino. And uh, I might even use the larger Arduino, the Mega. Uh, I have plans for either one could work, but um, so let's see if we can get this to drop in some of the holes of this proto board. And one of the pins is bent, so I'll have to straighten that later. So, so here the, the idea will be the Arduino board, either type of board, will stimulate some of the inputs of the PLA, and then it will measure the outputs. And, and tell us whether it's a good or a bad PLA. If it's bad, it'll tell us which outputs are failing. So anyway, I'm looking forward to doing this work. It's probably gonna spill into the later portion of the month and maybe even into October. So be looking out for that. Okay, so now for a couple of look ahead to the Septandi projects that are coming up in this month's episodes. So, uh, two projects that are coming up. One is coming this weekend on Saturday. We're going to take a look at five Coco 2s and there's going to be a survey question 
uh, to see if anyone wants to make a guess about the outcome by the end of the video. Uh, it was a fun video to make and I hope you're going to like that one on the Coco 2. And then uh, a little bit later, maybe the following week, I want to show you the work I've been doing on the RF modulator in the Coco 2. And we're going to take a look into the, well we might even do the um, composite video mod on the Coco 2. I had mentioned I really want to get the Coco 2's producing better video and uh, so I'll show you the reverse engineering work that I did on that board. Uh, just briefly, here's a picture of, here's a blow up of the inside, uh, actually the back side of the board inside the RF modulator. And yeah, I would have thought that there was a lot of information about it on the web, but I couldn't find any. It was very sparse. And almost everything that I found was you know, just the, showed the outline of the RF modulator. It showed the inputs and the, the one output, but it didn't really, uh, not, I didn't find any schematics. So I'm in the process of working through that myself right now. If you have any, any links or any schematics on that, uh, that could be really helpful. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to come up with my own. And finally, for today, I just wanted to mention something that I found, again, in the extended color basic manual. This is a great little manual uh, that I've really enjoyed. This is my, my copy from childhood. <laughs> look, how, look how worn this is. Uh, but anyway, I was needing a, I needed to make a sound output just yesterday. And it's so easy on the Coco series. If you've tried it on, if you've made, if you've made sound with the Commodore, if you've tried to make sound on the Commodore 64 with its built-in basic, you know how difficult it is just to get a single note. Now it has a great four channel sound capability, but just to get that first note is so difficult. Uh, however, with the TRS-80 series, the basic command is of the form play and then uh, in quotes uh, you know a series of notes pause commands uh, you know like length commands and pause commands and notes like the actual notes a through g with sharps and flats so it was so easy to get a tone i just needed something near a one kilohertz signal and uh, so i picked the proper tone to give me that and what a what an ease it was to, to get that, that sound. Anyway, I thought that was, that was a reminder of my experience with, my first experience with basic programming language back in the early and mid 80s. And uh, this was a, a fun book and still is a good book now that I've pulled it back out again. So that's it for today. Hope you have a good look ahead at what's coming up. And until next time, see you then.